everybody, I'm Jay Shady, and you're listening to The Voice of Reason. So, um, this is not going to be a very lengthy review, probably my shortest review ever. Uh, fact of the matter is, this is a very difficult time for the WWE, um, at least as it pertains to me as somebody who's watching a viewing fan, because um, right now you've got the Stanley Cup playoffs going on and the NBA playoffs. So... If the WWE isn't on target, isn't, you know, on point, if, you know, they start doing shit, um, I am going to change the channel because every night there's a game going on that's very important. Tonight you had Pacers and Hawks, Spurs, Mavericks, so, you know, if the WWE can't, you know, produce top-notch shit, worthwhile shit to keep me tuned to their channel, I am going to change the channel, and that's exactly what I did tonight. Uh, two hours in, you know, you just get a bunch of fucking bullshit, just, just stupid shit, and, you know, I'm like, fuck it, man, I mean, when am I gonna, you know, stick to a third hour shit and miss stuff that I'm actually, you know, entertained by, that I have a lot of interest in, you know, so I can't do it, this is the same thing that happened to me last year during this time, I was skipping Raws to watch Ranger games, so, you know, if the WWE can't produce worthwhile entertainment, you know, for a good portion of their three hours, I'm get. I have no choice but to change the channel. But um, that being said, the show did start off very fucking good. Great opener. Um, John Cena cutting one of his uh, best promos ever, in my opinion. Just a really great promo by John Cena, and you know, it's um pretty. You know, uh, nice that it's Bray Wyatt who has been getting some of. Seen his best work out of him. Um, the reason why it was a great promo is because, you know, for once it wasn't all this kitty cartoonish nonsense bullshit. For once, you know, John Cena started, you know, um, talking about true things, starting to, you know, face some true stuff. You know, the fans not, you know, giving a shit about him, the fans hating him. It wasn't all this stupid nonsense bullshit, him making, you know, Barney jokes and all this. It was, for once, John Cena speaking real, facing reality, facing, you know, truthful things going on in the WWE universe or whatever. So, um, like I said last week, when John Cena was all, like, you know, perplexed and confused and disappointed by the fact that everybody voted the, Wyatt, the whole Wyatt family against John Cena, I said John Cena should come out and say, you know, I put my ass on the line and this is how you thank me, and that's exactly what he did Tonight, um, he comes out and says, why, why, and, you know, I, I, I put, every, I, you know, come out here and try to entertain, and you decide to uh, make me go ahead against the whole Y family, why would you do that, and um, he, uh, he starts talking about um, how 10 years ago, he came in and everybody loved him, and now everybody hates him, you know, it was hinting a heel turn, but Let's face reality, you're not going to get a Cena heel turn, at least for any time in the near future. So stop thinking that this is leading to a heel turn, because it's not, make no mistake about it. But it's nice just to see him start to become, say the truth a little more. He doesn't have to go on with a full-fledged heel turn, but, you know, <coughs> address some fucking much-needed issues rather than acting all fucking hunky-dory every week, you know? Um... And then he says, uh, um, he applauds uh, the new upcoming guys. He says he's excited about the future. And he says, <laughs> to add more fuel to the heel turn fire, he says that uh, the quote from Dark Knight, Harvey Dent, um, that you either die a, die, a villain, uh, die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And, you know, I guess that's going to send everybody into mayhem, thinking that that means he's going to turn heel. I like the whole quote drop, Dark Knight, fantastic fucking movie, love Batman, but, you know, it's a dick tease. That's all it is. Let's address what it is. It's a dick tease. It's not happening. But, nevertheless, a great promo. And then, uh, you know, you get the Wyatt, the, the Flash, and you think the Wyatt family's coming out, and uh, you see, like, this whole... Uh, choir of children and they start singing he's got the whole world in his hands on the stage like fucking 50 kids from a church choir very fucking awesome shit just like it, this is like a movie quality shit this is very eerie and creepy you know kids singing songs are always fucking creepy in horror movies and that's what this was 
better than any fucking horror movie of these days. This segment was awesome. <clears throat> and then Bray Wyatt comes out and he starts leading the kids. Um, he says, uh, follow along my children all this. And he's leading all the kids into singing. He's got the whole world in his hands. And then the lights go out. Bray Wyatt's sitting down. The lights come back on. All the kids have the sheet masks on. And Bray Wyatt's laughing as there's a little child with a sheet mask on sitting on his lap. Very fucking creepy. Very scary. You know, it reminds me a lot of this movie from the 50s. It's called Night of the Hunter. You can tell a lot of this Bray Wyatt character is influenced by that movie with this uh, uh, kind of um, devil type of preacher guy. He's masked as, you know, a, a prophet of God, but he's got a lot of very shady, bad intentions deep down and, you know, tries to um, get all these kids to follow him. Reminds me a lot of this movie, Night of the Hunter. It's a good movie if you want to check it out if you're into old movies. Night of the Hunter is obviously a huge influence on the Bray Wyatt character and just very creepy stuff with all the children ringside sitting on his lap and him laughing, you know, very fucking awesome. Just different, something different, great entertainment, great opening segment. Then you get a match to follow it up with the Usos and um, Rai Baxel, which was a decent enough match. It was a tag team title match, Usos win. But you know, after that, it's just all fucking downhill. And, um, you know, I'm not going to stick around for this shit. You get stuff like Rusev versus um, Xavier Woods for the 13th time. You get Sheamus versus um, fucking Titus O'Neil in the squash match. And then the last straw was fucking uh, th 3MB versus uh, the motherfucking the conquistador motherfuckers, whatever you call them. Epico and Primo. That's it, you know. Once that match went on, I'm fuck this. I'm out. Fuck the WWE. You know, I'm not saying that I'm gonna stop watching every week, but for tonight, I stopped watching. That was it. I didn't give a fuck if Ric Flair was supposed to come back. Fuck it. You know, there's some good playoff games going on. I'm not gonna fucking stay and watch this childish bullshit. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot this goofy ass shit with Damian Sandow as Magneto and Hugh Jackman and Dolph Ziggler. Holy fucking shit, do I hate Dolph Ziggler. I used to be a Dolph Ziggler fan, but the motherfucker is just a cheerleader now. That's all he is. He's a horrible talker, you know, in this role that he's in. It's just fucking d disgusting. It really is. Dolph Ziggler is just fucking atrocious. Seriously. I mean, how could people still cheer for this guy? I mean, his whole role sucks. It really does. Dolph Ziggler just being Hugh Jackman's cheerleader, making a bunch of corny one-liners. Then uh, Damien Sandow comes out in some like party fair, party city Magneto costume. Just the most childish fucking skit I've ever seen in a long fucking time. You know, he's shown his magnetic powers and he's magnetically <laughs> uh, pulling the uh, microphone away from Hugh Jackman's hands. It's like, what the fuck? I felt so embarrassed for Hugh Jackman having to be in this shit. You know, the guy is doing superhero movies. You know, he's trying to, you know, make money off these blockbuster movies. And he has to come on this kid's show and act like a fucking buffoon. Holy fucking shit. This was horrible. And just another reason why I switched to the NBA. Like I said, don't care if fucking Ric Flair came back. I don't care what happened with Stephen McMahon apologizing. Don't give a fuck what happened in the Intercontinental match, the number one contender match. You know, WWE just drained me at that fucking point. And you know, I get it. It's post-WrestleMania. You're going to have a little bit of a hangover, a little bit of a drop in quality. But you got to do fucking something better than this. You really do. Especially when you got some big stuff happening in the sports world. You got to compete. You can't just fucking phone it in every night. And that's how it's been for the past couple weeks. Is a bunch of phone-in fucking Raws. The last... You know, decent Raw was um the one uh, after WrestleMania. That was a great Raw, but after that, it's been going down and down and down. Will Extreme Rules be good? I have <laughs> a lot of reservations about that. We'll see, but, um you know, I gave up on the fucking show. That's, you know, what you got to do sometimes. You have to just give up, and, you know, I'm watching the Spurs and Mavericks game right now, and it's a very be much better fucking decision because it's a good game. Looks good, 8 point fucking deficit, entertaining stuff, it's real, you're not going to get a bunch of cartoonish bullshit, you know, you're not going to get fucking some guy in a, a 2 cent Magneto costume, you know, magnetically forcing the rim to come down or some stupid shit like this, 
You're not going to get jobber matches with Rusev and Xavier Woods and fucking Hornswoggle and El Torito. You're not going to get a bunch of bullshit. You're going to get some manly fucking shit, which is what I need in order to fucking stay focused and watch Raw. When I get kitty bullshit, I have to go to real sports, okay? All right. So there you go. There's my little review. I don't give a fuck what happened in the last hour. You don't need to comment. Oh, you missed this. I don't give a shit. Um, I'll be back with a uh, Extreme Rules review. Might be going to the show if my connections could come through. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So yeah, pretty fucking shitty show. At least for the first two hours. Don't know about the third hour. As always, I am Jay Shady, the voice of reason. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.